Since Christmas is almost upon us, I figured I'd cover a little something I got from Banggood for about five bucks. That would probably make a great stocking stuffer or Secret Santa type gift for someone who's into DIY projects. It's a little solderable Christmas tree. With free shipping, it took about two weeks to get here, which should give you more than enough time to get it for Christmas if you watch this video right after I make it. Otherwise, uh, you're probably on your own there. And so without further ado, let's see how it goes together. It came wrapped in this nice, uh, I wouldn't call it nice. It came wrapped in a bag with some uh, foam around it. And not that it needs much protection, this, I thought it was just battery powered, but it comes with a USB cable also. I mean, that's kind of cool, I guess. Two segments of the tree, they kind of just fit together like this. Ah, like this, and they get peppered with LEDs, and that's about all there is to it. it comes with resistors, the USB cable, and a whole bunch of and a whole bunch of loose LEDs and transistors. Oh, this must blink. Probably unsurprisingly, if you've seen some of my other videos, um, I actually didn't look into this a lot before I bought it. I mean, it was five bucks, so I really had no idea what it came with or what was involved in it. So yeah, it should make for a neat little ornament when it's all done. I mean, it's not really an ornament meant to hang on a tree, although I guess you could just put a little string on the top and hang it. It's meant for like a, like a desktop thing, but it should be pretty cool. It's kind of weird, but it didn't even occur to me when I was taking stuff out of the bag that this didn't come with instructions. Now, that's not the worst thing in the world because the tree halves are actually labeled pretty well with the components. The only sticking point, which is right at the beginning, I wanted to put the resistors in first, and they were mostly 10K and 1K resistors, but there was one 2.2K. And the board was only labeled for 10K, or just R for resistor. The, I didn't know where to put the 2.2K. I kind of guessed because it was one position on one half of the tree that wasn't mirrored in the other half, so I figured that was the odd resistor out. And it seemed to work in the end, so no big deal. Of course, I could have traced out the circuits and probably figured it out, but I mean, who has the time when putting together a little Christmas tree? So, of course, separate your components first. I didn't really do too good a job about that. I finally got the resistors into piles. I put the 10Ks in first and the rest of the resistors. You can do it in whatever order you want. And of course, resistors aren't polarized, so it doesn't matter which way you put them in, unlike the LEDs and capacitors, well, and transistors, which we'll get to. And this is a really good project for someone who's just learning to solder. I mean, it's not too complicated, but it's got enough solder joints that you'll really get some good practice. And it would probably be relatively easy to troubleshoot because the way it's set up is in groups of LEDs. These are the color-changing type LEDs where they change color internally but the capacitors and transistors are used to change the cycling in segments of the tree so that it doesn't all just look random. It's kind of like patterned as far as it flashes a little more slowly. I think they just drop the voltage a little bit, the voltage comes up. In the end, the effect is just fancier than just color changing LEDs. Now, one thing I screwed up also right at the beginning because of lack of instructions, I didn't even look at the product picture on Banggood, which is definitely something you should do before assembling this because that probably would have also solved my resistor problem. But the LEDs are not supposed to be mounted flush to the board. I mean, usually you see LEDs, you see through holes, you figure I'll just push the LEDs all the way through and mount them. And you can't really see it here in the video too well, but the LEDs had crimps on the leads about a third of the way down from the LED itself. And I didn't know what those crimps were for, so foolishly, that's how I mounted them. But really, the point of the crimps was to line them up, because the LEDs were supposed to stick proud of the board by quite a little bit, so that they could be bent outwards at the end. So, um, yeah, when you're putting it together, don't mount the LEDs flush. You can use the crimps to gauge the distance. It didn't work out perfectly for all the LEDs, although that could have been me being a little bit sloppy. But the point is, the flush mount ones look a little weird in the end. I couldn't desolder them and put them back, because I'd already trimmed the leads, so I was kind of stuck with it. I guess I could have got some new LEDs, but I don't really have color changing ones handy, so it would have looked out of place anyway. Eh, just a minor little screw up. I mean, you can always make that the back side of the tree and hopefully no one will ever see it. If you make the same mistake I did, which you won't because you just saw this video. If you're new to soldering, one thing you should definitely get, and it's really cheap, is a pair of helping hands. That's what's holding the circuit board in place right there. And it makes it a lot easier because if you have it on the table and it's not held in place, it just sort of like wanders around as you push at it with your uh, soldering pen. And of course, when you have it upside down in the helping hands, 
the components just want to fall out. So all you do is splay the leads out slightly so that the component can't fall out. And if you really want to be anal about it, and if you're mounting the component flush, which the LEDs are not, you should solder one lead and then just double check it, make sure it can, it's flush, and then solder the other leads so that you don't have to end up desoldering both and jingling, jiggling it around. The transistors are a general purpose S9014 NPNs, and they're all identical on the board, so it doesn't really matter which one you put where. And the board is labeled with semicircles that match the package of the transistor, so you know which way to align it. Another mistake I made, which is definitely foreseeable in hindsight, and probably in foresight too if you really considered it, is that you need to really solder the capacitors and transistors after assembling the two halves of the tree together. Because there's a couple of spots where the capacitor and transistor won't pass each other. And I'll show you that later when I get to, to that point. I'm, I end up having to take one of the capacitors off and re it on the back of the board. Um, not a big deal. Uh, it just makes it look a little odd, I guess. But uh, works fine. So, I mean, again, this is a great thing for learning because you learn from mistakes. And, you know, I'm not a master electrical engineer. I'm not even all that great at soldering, to be honest. But uh, doing stuff like this, making mistakes, making simple mistakes that you can correct on a project like this is a really useful learning tool. So if you're looking to get this as a gift um, for someone who enjoys soldering or DIY projects, that sort of thing, or a kid who's just getting into it, um, I think it makes a really good first project. That being said, there are simpler and smaller first projects, which maybe would be even better to start with, but like I said, for learning, this is actually pretty good. It would be a lot better with some kind of instructions and guidebook, which I guess I could make, but I'm not going to because I'm kind of lazy. But, uh, you know, you could really get into how transistors work and how capacitors work and their purpose in this circuit, which, of course, you learn nothing about that just putting this together with no instructions. Uh, kind of a downside of just ordering one of these kits direct from China. Maybe there is a supplier that does package a nice instruction booklet and information with it. But anyway, all told, uh, came together pretty easily. You can see right now I'm trying to just figure out what to do with that capacitor and transistor. I ended up bending a transistor out of the way, as well as a capacitor, and then also moving one around the back. Uh, kind of a pain, but uh, like I said, you make mistakes, you deal with them. That's half the fun. And one thing I should note, this came with a battery pack, which is supposed to be mounted underneath. I don't know why I didn't do it when I was first assembling this. I was just excited to get it done, and it had the USB connection, so I jumped right to that. Uh, attaching the battery pack is really no big thing. It's just a red and a black lead, positive and negative, respectively, and they just go into two holes that are labeled battery, positive, negative on the board. So, uh, not much to it. The only thing I have to comment on here is that to connect the battery pack to the base of the tree, there were two screws. Now, there's no threads on either the battery pack or the base of the tree, and no nuts, so you can't really screw them into anything. I just pushed them through and then blobbed a bunch of solder on the threads, and that acted, I guess, kind of as a nut, or served the purpose of a nut, and held it together quite nicely. So um, that's my tip for you if you run into that situation. In fact, in most any soldering project like this, if you need to attach a screw to something and there's no threads, but there's a through hole, just push the screw through and blob some solder on the end of it. It'll work really well. It could just be a little fiddly to get it lined up, but other than that, uh, it's pretty good. So there's the tree, um, lit up in all its glory. It doesn't do all that much, you know, it's not like it's not like a cool robotics kit, but uh, I really like it. It, it looks great. Um, I gave it to my wife as sort of an early Christmas present because that's the extent of the decorations around our house, and she really liked it. Uh, she thought it was thoughtful, you know, it came from the heart. I actually went to some effort in putting it together. Uh, so, yeah, you know, earn some, earn some brownie points if you want to buy this for yourself and put it together and give it to someone. And so yeah, pretty neat and enjoyable little project. Actually worked on the first try, so that's pretty cool. Um, despite my one little screw up, uh, looks quite nice, especially from this angle. Yeah, neat. I definitely recommend it for uh, anyone who's into this sort of thing. Except for the lack of directions, um, but you can follow along with this video, I guess. And uh, yeah, pretty cool. For more videos like this and videos not all like this, check out my channel, subscribe if you want, or don't, entirely up to you. And uh, thanks for watching.